All right, I'm thinking for this recap, I want to review how you came to the seventh chords here. Uh, looking at the speed drill stuff, and I was thinking, you know, as much as we've done so far with that, honest question, do you need demos of those things anymore? Would they be helpful? So let me know if seeing me do it, hearing it, would be still beneficial to you, or if it's just like, yeah, you get it, you know, sort of thing. So let me know. I mean, I'm happy to do it for you, but figure like, yeah, you know how these things go now. Maybe you don't need demos for those sorts of things, but for this, because this is new, I want to talk about how you did it. So, for like that C major 7, you started with your C major chord, you took the octave of the root note, which is on the B string, and then you dropped it down to the B note. So, major 7, you're adding the 7th, or you can call it the major 7 to the, to the triad. So D minor 7, I think what you initially did was you took the octave of the root note and dropped it down a half step, which creates a minor major 7, which is not in key. You will come across that in harmonic minor. Very interesting sound. But yeah, you got to add a flat 7, also known as a minor 7 interval, to the minor chord to get the desired chord. So, yeah, you got to, for the minor 7, dominant 7, the minor 7 flat 5, you got to take the octave root note and drop it a whole step. For the minor 7, you did exactly what the easy way is. You took the octave root note and dropped that down a whole step. But I wrote this one out instead because it just sounds neat. Now, building other chord shapes and whatnot, as long as you have all the notes that are supposed to be used, you can put things together all over the place. So, and we haven't gotten to this yet, but eventually, like, seventh chords that I like to do are these versions without the fifth interval. So, like, the one, three, and seven. Taking the five out, I mean, just quite nice sounding chords. You can do some pretty heavy stuff with them, too. But, um, anyway. So, for the major seven, you took the F major chord, and then you dropped the octave down a half step. Another popular and very easy way to play an F major seven is this two or three two one zero. And G seven took that chord shape there. Octave of the root note here. Certainly can't drop the open G string, so we take that one down a whole step. So, yes, the fifth chord in key, or the fifth position, will yield a dominant chord. So, when you add a minor seven interval or a flat seven interval to a major triad, that gets you the dominant chord. So, yeah, you could do it this way, but it's way easier to do that. And then for the A minor 7, one we didn't talk about today. So you could also, so yeah, you, you took the octave of the uh, root note, dropped it to the open G string. Well, you could also do it this way, to where you put the G on the high E string. So the E note is the fifth interval, which you already have on the D string. So that's one way you can do the A minor 7. You can also double the flat seventh interval. And then, yes, your B minor seven flat five, also known as B half diminished seven. Taking that B diminished chord, dropping that octave of the root note down a whole step to the A note. So that's how you came across those. We wanted to go over that again. So you can use that as a reminder of how to make the G major chords, or the um, key of G, all the chords for that. Same thing with the key of F. So to sum all that up, remember to take the octave of the root note and drop it either a half step for the major seven or a whole step for a minor seventh interval. So let me know if you have any questions. Let me know 
if my demonstrating the speed drill stuff would be helpful at this point. All right, we'll see you in a couple weeks.